Hello everyone, I am Sakshi Vekatyal, a senior faculty and program coordinator at Touchwood Wedding School. In this session, we're going to talk about services of a wedding planner in which will, I will also explain you the scope of work. Basically, why do we need a wedding planner? So we're going to talk about the services of a wedding planner in detail. I'll just quickly share my screen with you guys. So before talking about the services of a wedding planner, let me just quickly talk about who is a wedding planner. So basically a wedding planner is a professional. Why I'm saying is a professional is because a lot of people think that in wedding planning, we don't need any experts because we have all the elders who can manage the entire wedding. But let me just make it very clear. Things have changed. Uh, we need experts for every other thing. And that's the same case with weddings. A wedding planner is a professional person who is trained in order to assist in designing, planning, and managing the entire wedding. So when I'm talking about designing, planning, managing, the last and the most important part is the executing. So whenever we talk of a wedding, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of design, there's a lot of expectations uh, that is uh, set within the client's mind and as a wedding planner, as an expert, we understand those expectations and basically turn their dreams into reality. As a wedding planner, uh, they, they follow an SOP. So SOP is standard operating process. So we follow a process so that there is nothing left and there is no mess in the end. Also, we keep in mind the budget constraints, the location constraints, and the various constraints which comes while planning the entire wedding. The scale of the weddings have increased from domestic to international to specific decor requirements to specific artist requirements. And that's the reason that a professional guide is really imperative, is really important in order to get the right guidance and understanding of what is required and when is required. So yeah, as I mentioned uh, that we were, we're going to talk about the services of a wedding planner. So yes, in this, I'm going to take you through the entire services, which is an integral part while planning a wedding. So whenever we talk about the role and responsibilities of a wedding planner, it differs. Why? Because there are a lot of elements which are involved. The, the scope of work is really huge. And uh, that's the reason that we are here to talk about these services in detail. So I'll just quickly take you through uh, all these services and then we'll talk about each and every service in a detail. So number one is destination. Now destination is the first and the foremost thing which comes in mind whenever we thought of planning any event, whether it's a small birthday party or it's an anniversary or a very big event in everybody's life, that's a wedding. So deciding upon the destination, keeping in mind the budget constraints, keeping in mind the accessibility, keeping in mind that whether we're going to get the right venue or not. So there are a lot of things which comes into account whenever we're going to talk about destinations. The second is design and decor. Some people like it boho, some people like it very glimmery, some people like it very shimmer, some people like it uh, very neutral. So whenever we talk about design and decor, Every person, every individual, every couple has a different eye to it. So as a wedding planner, we need to understand the taste of the clients, see the venue, understand what will go when. If you're talking about a summer wedding, what will go fine with the summer wedding? If we are talking about a winter wedding, what will look nice? If we're talking about a pool party, what kind of decor we can have at the pool party? So there's a lot of things which comes into account whenever we talk about design and decor. The third is in trailing artistry, art. So whenever I talk about art, art is just is not limited to a singer or a painter. Art is something which gives you an entertainment, which attracts the eye of the guest, which, which excites the guest. So as a wedding planner, it's your moral responsibility and duty to get the right artist at your client's wedding, to get the right kind of engagement and to create the right kind of you know, ambience so that you have the right ambitainment, which is ambience plus entertainment for a wedding or for any event in the wedding, like an engagement, sagan, haldi, whatever. 
The third and the foremost, the fourth and the foremost is the culinary aspects. Yes, uh, no wedding or no event is possible without the food. And that's the reason the food is the most, most important part of any wedding. So the right kind of food, which matches the taste birds of your clients. Sometimes we handle Punjabi weddings, the taste birds are different. Sometimes we have South Indian clients, the taste birds are different. So again, we need to understand the tradition, the culture, the food, the taste birds of our client. And the right kind of venue has to be chosen so that we get the right chefs. And in case we need any third party vendors in terms of some specific counters like ice cream counters, chart counters. So we also need to check all that with the venue that what all is allowed and what all is not allowed. The next is the capturing moments, the right kind of photographer who can capture the right moment, uh, keeping in mind the lights, the keeping in mind the actual, you can say emotion, candid shots. Again, you will have a lot of people who are photographers, so there is no, there is no limit because uh, there, there's a lot of creative people in the market, but the right kind of um, you can say manpower or the right kind of vendor uh, is real is of real importance by planning for wedding the next is paparazzi moment so the couple the, the the close family members should actually feel that this is the most important day of their life and they are the most important people on this earth right now so to give them that paparazzi feel to give them that high end feel you need to have the right kind of people who can actually visualize those shots or visualize those uh, special moments and actually execute them the next is innovative invites invitation is again an important because it's it's one of the big elements in pre-wedding where you set a theme you set you basically uh, gives or uh, give a guest a freedom to visualize a wedding that how big it's going to be uh, how we're going to actually have that grand event so from e invites uh, to hard invites, hard, hard copy invites, wherein we have different kind of boxes. We have box invites. We have, uh, you can say, we also are into a lot of uh, invites, which which are environment friendly these days. Uh, we are also going. We are a lot of people are also trying just digital medium using online as a platform to invite people. So we're going to also talk about the innovative invites. The next is wedding vows. No. Wows is again a very, very important part. No wedding is complete without the wows. So how your client visualize your, your the Varmala ceremony or how do they want their actual rituals to happen? What are the rituals of, the, of your client? Now as a wedding planner, you can't just say that I can plan the wedding, but I don't know what are the rituals because you are a wedding planner and you're, it's, it's, it's something which is an integral part while planning a wedding and no wedding is complete without the vows. So uh, what all uh, pundits you have, how are you going to do the main ceremonies, what are the things that you require in order to do the ceremonies. So everything is your duty. The next is customizing collaterals and countdowns. Uh, two days to go, are you ready? Save the date, block your date, are some of the countdowns which are commonly used while planning a wedding. So how are we going to talk about these countdowns? How are we going to share these countdowners? Uh, what is going on their Instagram page? What is happening on their website? So again, to, to create that hype, to, to basically create that excitement, there are different ways we're going to talk about this in the further presentation. The next is wedding favors. Uh, when you invite your guests, again, you have to please them. You, the goodbye has to be really happy. So whether you want to give them a box of chocolates, a box of sweets, and so it totally depends upon client's requirement. But again, you have to come up with some amazing options, some creative ideas, some amazing, um, you can say, packings. So we're going to talk about the importance of wedding favors. Oh, makeup experts. If your bride isn't happy, your wedding can never be successful. So you can't just say that I'm, I'm a boy or I'm, I'm not a one who is really interested in makeup because it's an integral part. Again, it's an important part while planning a wedding. So you have to take care of makeup experts. The top shots must be on your tips. 
whether you talk about Swati Varma, Guneet Reddy, Kriti Diaz, whatsoever. So I'm just taking the big names of the makeup experts. You have to explore your market, understand whether you want your bride wants to go on neutrals, a nude makeup, or your one bride has some different requirement. Uh, she's also looking for a makeup for her mother or for her baby, whatever, right? For her relatives. So you need to keep a check on that and create a proper, you, know, you can say sheet, reach out to the experts and then probably uh, give her a proper solution to it. The next is exceptional hospitality. The reason that I'm saying it exceptional is because if you are inviting somebody uh, to a wedding or to any event, if you are not good at hospitality, the game is gone. Understand one thing, a small smile, a thank you, and basically solving all their queries like this is, is something which is a must while planning a wedding. So if you are a wedding planner, you have to be super at hospitality. The RSVP uh, solving all the guest queries in terms of how they're going to reach the venue, what is the mode of transportation, what are the options of flights, X, Y, Z. There are a lot of things which comes into account and you as a wedding planner have to be really, really careful about all these duties. So because each wedding is unique, each client is special and their day is super special and everything is tailor-made. There is no book which just defines that as a wedding planner, you just have to do this or if you, if you just read this, you can be a wedding planner because everything is tailor-made. You have to stand out in order to stand out. You have to research, go out, things for unique ideas, execute it and always have that smile on your face for your client because it's their the most important day and they would never want to compromise on anything on this particular day. So quickly, I'll just take you uh, to the first service which I was talking about is the destination. Now, whenever we talk about planning a wedding, we firstly ask from the client that, so what is the destination preference in your mind? Whether you want to go for a local destination, you want to keep it domestic or you want to go international. So that kind of uh, mind frame needs to be understand from the very beginning so that once the location is finalized, you can actually start the further processing because if we talk about international again we have to be very careful about the frequency of the flights we have to be careful about the visa documentation we have to talk about the right kind of venue the right kind of manpower the right kind of uh, you can say setup that the bride or the groom is uh, visualizing of so a clear picture of what destination your client is looking for has to be there. Also, sometimes the client expects you to give them certain options. So you should always ask their budget and the kind of ceremonies that they want to plan so that uh, you make them understand that what is the cost of traveling from that, uh, from the local, the home destination to the final destination because then there is flights, there are logistics. Again, this, this is a huge cost which is involved in the logistics of, of all this transportation. So you have to be very clear within your mind frame that what is the destination, what are the, let's say, what are the top two destinations that your client wants. Sometimes the clients are confused, like they're confused between Jaipur and Udipur. So they're trying to find out that which suits them better. Maybe just because they're not able to get the right kind of venue, maybe because uh, they are not uh, getting the right kind of setup, which they have in mind, right? So you have to actually get in the shoes of the client to understand their requirements to to basically understand what are they looking for and then suggesting them with the possible options so once the client is okay with the destination then you talk about the right kind of venue the right kind of property the right kind of hotel because again you have to keep in mind the most important point which is the facts Max is the number of people, right? You have to understand the maximum and the minimum guarantee from the client. That okay, so these are the maximum numbers uh, that you have in mind. What are the number of rooms that you want? What is the category rooms that you want? Sometimes the client says that we want five uh, luxury suites or five, let's say, uh, 
five economy. So you have to understand that whether they want executive class, whether they want, let's say, a VIP class. So those are category of rooms differ. So you need to also understand their requirement in terms of the number of rooms so that you can give them the right kind of venue options, right? Uh, whenever we talk about a venue, the accessibility, the connectivity really, really matters because so that there is no, you know, there's an ease of traveling. The guests should not actually crib on those last moment that they're not getting any transportation. The roads are really bad. There's a construction work going on. So there are a lot of things which comes into account. And also one of the most important part, which is the budget. So under analysis, you have the budget, clear budget. In your mind, you can't come up with the options because every property you have to also fix up whether the client is looking for a five star, seven star, three star, four star. So what kind of property the guest is looking for? So yes, whenever we talk about destination, have a clear picture what destination your client is looking for and then probably the right kind of venue in which maybe you have various ceremonies. So you would need again banquet halls, lawns. So you're, you're, you're you should have a clear picture in your mind that what is your client looking for so that you give them the best possible options, right? Let's just quickly talk about the design and decor. So I was talking about the importance of design and decor. Why? Because whenever uh, a client comes and uh, shares their brief, their, their summary, their requirement with us, they basically talk about their dreams. And as a wedding planner, you have to convert those dreams into reality. Sometimes they talk about that they like pastries. Sometimes they want that we want a white wedding. Sometimes they talk about we have a proper color theme of red and golden in our mind. So as a wedding planner, you have to clearly understand their taste, how do they visualize their wedding, what will they prefer in terms of the color combinations, and then uh, try finding the suitable decor options uh, so that it should be personalized, it should be beautiful, whether using their initials, whether having their hashtag in the wedding. So it's, for example, the girl really, the bride really likes butterflies. So how to incorporate those butterflies in the wedding or the boy is really fond of superheroes. So how can we, uh, let's say, have certain something related to superheroes, let's say, if not in on wedding, on the cocktail day. So you have to figure out those things because your client's requirements, your client's preference, your client's taste is again a real of real importance and you can't miss on those points. Also, budget again is really important in design and decor. But before the budget, you should also keep the kind of venue. For example, you're doing in an outdoor event, so you have to understand that what will look good in a daytime outdoor, what will look good inside, indoor, um, let's say in the nighttime. So you have to understand uh, the right time, the right place for a decor. Also, whenever we talk about design and decor, we actually talk about mood board. So mood board is basically, um, you can say, whenever we make our presentations, while we pitch to the client we create a mood board wherein we have a certain color code in the mind keeping our client's preference keeping what we think is the right for the client also the kind of decor that the client is visualizing so that mood board clearly gives a clear idea gives a clear picture to our client that if they like uh, pinks and they like let's say white how the entire wedding will look like if they like to likes it to be bluish how the setup will look like also, while selecting the colors, uh, while because again, the lights are going to play an important role in design and decor, keep in mind that the photographers hate pink light. The photographers don't like la very different kind of lighting in the wedding because uh, it really, really affects the pictures. So as a wedding planner, you have to be really careful for the kind of lights that you use in a wedding. So align the right requirements with the right vendor within the right budget is something which is the uh, beauty of a wedding planner you have to visualize the uh, decor the theme of all the functions in the in detail and take a proper approval from the client right so let's just talk about artist um, artist is is actually one of the most important things in a 
in, in a wedding or in planning any ceremony. And the reason is because people are here to enjoy, people are here to actually forget everything there, or people are here to actually get in that groove, get in that uh, mode. So you have to understand your client taste, preference, and the most important thing is budget. Because if I talk about just a very small thing like Mandy artist, you will get a Mandy artist of let's say 10,000 to 15,000 rupees. Then again, you can will get the artist who will even charge a lakh for the same thing, but the quality differs, right? So you have to understand your client's budget and then only propose them any kind of artist. Whenever we plan of an artist, we actually talk about ambitainment. So ambitainment is basically ambience plus entertainment comes into ambitainment. Ambitainment or ambitainment, you can actually not pronounce it any ways you want, is really important for to create the right kind of vibe, to create the right kind of entertainment because um, your guest should actually get engaged uh, with the, you actually you you actually have to get you have to engage them with the artist and they should actually feel that wow factor whenever they are at that ceremony so whether they're looking for uh, a dancer a band a sufi band uh, let's say something which is related to high end 3d setup something which is related to of an act kind of a thing. So you have to get the right requirement of the guest, but also have that clear budget in the mind. Backends and technical requirements are really important. So whenever we hire an artist, we have to understand their tech rider. So a tech rider is the technical requirements of the artist. Uh, the manager of the artist share their uh, tech rider with us. And we have a clear picture that what are the requirements of the artist. Right. Again, a special effects create a really, really mesmerizing effect whenever we plan such kind of art. Your spotlights, your different kind of lights, your gobo lights, which are or a 360 degree moving light, again is is of really importance because it's it's it's, it's a kind of an excitement that you create. It's kind of an ambience that you create. Right. Also, whenever we look for an artist, for well, number one, we have to check their availability. So before confirming anything to your client, uh, check whether that uh, the, the artist is available or not. Once they are available, you also need to add on uh, the travel, stay and logistics of the, uh, of the artist in the budget because the artist is going to take a proper, you can say, uh, logistics cost from you in which will involve their travel. So maybe if they're traveling from Bombay to Delhi, their flight tickets, uh, the, their, the, the flight tickets of their team members, right? So you have to be, be very much sure and get that right kind of cost, right? The next is the culinary aspect. So like I was saying that uh, food is a real of real importance if you are a guest don't get the right food actually they will not they will not walk out happy uh, from the wedding so so a best caterer when i say best i mean ideal something which suits if you're doing a marwadi wedding their taste words will be different if you're doing a punjabi wedding their taste words will be different also the presentation is of real importance it should match the theme the design the decor of your wedding so if you have lots of blacks and you have a lot of reds, golden, so try having um, your crockery around that colors only. You're talking about a lot of neutral shades, something which is related to peach, whites will work in your case. So again, you have to not only get the right caterer, but also get the right kind of crockery for your wedding. Also, it depends upon the preference, the size and the scale of the venue. Uh, you need to understand the packs, you need to understand the taste buds, and then look for an ideal caterer for the wedding. Uh, whenever we do such weddings, a lot of times it happens that we get the food, the main course and the starters from the venue itself. Uh, so it is preferred that you do a food uh, tasting before the wedding. So that your client also gets the idea and in case if they want to share a few uh, tips like they don't want it spicy, they want to keep it very mild or maybe uh, let's say uh, they want to keep 
the oil very limited they want they don't want it very oily uh, food or maybe they want a something specific which which represents their culture their tradition so you can fix up their meeting with the head chef uh, of the hotel also there are times when we we, we get all the uh, main food from the venue but we also have those special counters uh, at the wedding like an ice ice cream counters let's say we we call baskin robbins uh, to to get the ice cream or maybe we have a full chaat bandar for the chaat sections or maybe we have some different person who is uh, from punjab and they have that mini truck which represents their culture so all these permissions are need to be taken from the venue people way in advance whether they will allow the food from outside if yes what kind of setup what 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 will be the placement where their um, section will be placed again that's okay very very important part next it is always suggested that we sit with the client and uh, maybe the head chef or the banquet manager of the hotel and get the menu curated because every client has specific reference preference in terms of some people want no garlic no onion some people want less salt some people want spicy some people want very mild some people don't want the oil so you have you should sit with the uh, head chef give them those tips give them those uh, pointers also you can always select the kind of uh, so there there will be a lot of options on the menu so you can sit and you can have your menu created with the client so that there is no last minute mess and there is no last minute additions to the menu we can have the finest menu uh, finest menu finest food but if the the service is not top notch then there is no point of actually um, having such uh, you can say good food because your um, you should have people who are trained who know how to deal with guests who know how to serve to the guests and hygiene is real important so whether they are wearing the cap whether they are wearing the gloves whether the uniform is clean or not is of real importance right the next is capturing moments photography and uh, cinematography again is important the right kind of photographer who can capture the right moment of the right time pre wedding shoot is again uh, a very important uh thing these days a lot of people go even they travel from one place to another to get some uh, to get the right pre wedding shoot done some people travel to mountain some go to beaches some even travel international so you have to understand with your client what do they uh, have in mind uh, with reference to their pre wedding shoot also there are a lot of locations which are there in the market in which you can actually just you just go to get those right which is like there's a there's a place called the perfect location which is in gurgaon so again they have different themes they have different setups so you can go there there's a grease field then there's a park there's a library so even if you have a story let's say you the guys met the guys had met each other in college so you can even create that kind of setup in that area to to get that feel and to get that right capture so you have to suggest all these things to the client um, make sure that you get the right kind of cap uh, So the right pictures and the right videos are captured. The right the right songs are used. Ask uh, the uh, photographer to share the list of songs that they have in mind, and then probably the client can shortlist. Because again, these are the very very uh, small details, but are very important things in 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 somebody's life. So you have to be very careful about those things. Also, be very much sure about the del deliverables with the timelines. A lot of times it happens that we use these pictures. for our save the date for our teasers uh, for our countdowners so make sure that you follow those timelines to tell your photographers to deliver these pictures at the right time so your countdowners or maybe your collaterals are not delayed so deliverables on time as per the timelines are of real real importance right then your show flow should be shared in advance so that your guests um, and also your your client knows that okay when she has to go for the wedding shoot when she has to go for this so that there is no um, there, there's no mess in the end and your photographer and your client are on the same page right also there are a lot of times uh, that we as a wedding planner are are import, are, uh, are responsible to update the instagram and the facebook pages of uh, the bride and the groom so basically to upload the pictures so right snippets right right uh, videos uh, right kind of photos should has to basically has to go on the um, on these pages with the right kind of caption so you have to take care of those things also uh the next is paparazzi moments how do you create those uh, that 
that the special factor, that wow factor, that awe factor is something which is very important. Uh, you have to create those larger than life experiences, the, whether you have that big six layer cake, whether you have those fireworks, which make these, uh, the, guy, the, the bride and the groom important, whether you have a different kind of entry, whether you have a different kind of welcome for the bride and groom, whether you use those, uh, let's say, confinity, whether you use these anars, whatever. So how are you going uh, to create that those larger than life experiences for your bride and groom is, is something is of real importance. You should be different. You should come with creative ideas and create the special moments in everybody's life. Look for things. Look, actually, um, get into your client's shoes and understand what do they like? What are the small things that they talk? So try to incorporate those things and create those special moments for them. The next is, as I was talking about innovative invites, uh, these days we're also uh, putting a lot of stress on those e-invites. E-invites is electronic invites, which we generally share. Uh, now we can also do that WhatsApp. Sometimes uh, we do it personally uh, by sending the emails or probably uh, getting in touch with the clients all over the call and explaining. So there's a, there's a, altogether it's a real of real importance because uh, you might have to even take the last minute confirmations from the guest so um, we generally give both the options to the uh, clients sometimes the client opt for both the options whether it is physical and invite so basically they send a physical invite and the countdowners are sent in the form of e-invites such as save the dates or block your dates right or maybe sharing some uh, some theme of the event so you have to give them the right vendor suggestions or uh, you have to give them the right color theme because that should also match the mood board of the ceremony. We should keep their budget and their preference in mind, whether they want a scroll card, whether they want a box card, whether they want to give chocolates, sweets, or something else. So you have to understand their uh, color preference or the mood board uh, that, that you have for, the, for their ceremonies and then only suggest them with the options. It has to be unique. It has to be innovative. It has to be creative. If we are even talking about e-invites, what in e-invites, what all um, things that we can use. If you talk about a WhatsApp video, what are the things we can incorporate in that video? So again, that's really, really important. If we specifically talk about physical invites, their distribution and logistics is also of real importance. You have to take care about, you have to manage those routes, uh, ask for the timelines. The cards should reach uh, to the guests on time, understanding their availability. Sometimes people are not available. So a proper RSVP has to be done, whether they are available, whether we can come uh, to give them the card or not, who will travel with whom. So everything has to be uh, done and so that you don't miss on anything. Then comes your wedding vow. So again, as I said that it's, it's an integral part of planning any wedding. You should, as a wedding planner, know about the rituals uh, of uh, what is Ghurchari, what is uh, Padfera, uh, what is uh, Dudo. So you should all know all these things. You should know what is the difference between Anand Karaj. So the reason that we are out there, I'm talking about all these is as a wedding planner, you can't just run and say that I know how to get that right decor, but ritual is not my cup of tea. But obviously you can't learn everything from day one, but what you can do is you can actually uh, start making a note of certain rituals that you may have witnessed in one wedding so that it gives you, by the time you do, you've done four or five weddings, you have a clear picture, okay, that in Marwari there are these important things. And be very uh, a keen observer and the reason that I'm saying that because you need to observe those minute details because there, there's uh, these minute details are the rituals, they, they represent their tradition, represent their culture, and no family or no couple will ever compromise on these particular things. So try to be a keen observer, observe those, have a knowledge of all the rituals of different culture, different uh, religion, and have, try to understand them and further then implement them. Um, if it's, 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 it, in case if you have certain doubts, you should always sit with the client and uh, note all these rituals in detail, maybe in a notebook or in a diary, because this really helps you on the day of the event. Uh, you can ask the question 10 times that day when you are in a discussion mode with the client, but in case if there is, if there's a mess and if there's something which is wrong will happen on the day, but obviously the client will get pissed off. So make sure that you ask that particular time and you clear all your doubts. 
the next is customizing countdowns like i use the the use of hashtag the the use of um, the right words the right liners two days to go for this are you ready save the date block your dates are are of real importance to add that personal touch uh, because a lot of times it happens that um, the client or the bride wants to create that 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 hype that hype in the market where uh, they the, all the family members the relatives get really excited there is some uh, dress code there is some specific theme that we use so so you have to make sure that you use those and in, incorporate those things in the um, you can say while planning uh, the countdowns you can pick up the colors and the elements that your client like uh, you can actually uh, the printing and the quality real is of real real importance so again sit with the client and discuss discuss and discuss then comes your wedding favors of uh, the unique and innovative favors add a lot of personalization and customization uh, again hashtags the the colors that your bride like uh, are of real real importance so make sure that you you talk to the client in advance and you you, you understand you understand those 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 things well in advance right sorry for that noise guys then comes your uh, even in this lot of times the client shares that um, they their preference and their budget because it it you have to give the best deal understanding their requirements so so make sure that you you sit with the client and discuss all these things in detail as i mentioned a few names um availability like we check the availability of the artist make sure that you ask the bride the skin type the choice the location the event the budget also managing the travel and stay so basically logistics you have to check with the bride in advance what is her preference what kind of makeup expert uh, does she have few names in her mind if she if she if she's totally dependent upon you could make a list tell her uh, what or uh, basically what kind of categories they are in the market or uh, like for example if 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 you talk about five makeup expert what do they specialize in where is their location where are they okay in traveling uh, to the location or or she has to travel to their saloon so make sure that you sit with the bride and discuss about her color of the lehenga dress color then hair accessories everything so that even if you are talking to the makeup experts or their managers you still have a clear picture in the mind um your guest list rsvp reminder messages confirmations doing the same coordination with the hotels number of rooms what all will go in the room um, is there what is the time of the check in how are we welcoming the guest everything has to be uh, on a, on a, you can say properly done in a proper frame because providing guest with the necessary information and keeping them involved is real of real importance uh, make sure that you have your personal concierge or you can also call it as a festivity desk wherein in case if there is a problem or the guest wants to ask something they can simply come to that festivity desk and you have your uh, trained professional sitting there who are there to help them and solve all their uh, queries and assist them in all the points so make sure you have those people thank you so much uh, for this session so the, the scope is real huge uh, so i've shared the list of the services so you will not eventually learn everything from day one but what you can do is you can start uh, working in a, in a particular segment for example you start working with the hospitality and then you move on to talking with photographers or vendor coordination so you will excel day by day and um, you can't just learn everything from day one so that's all for this session uh, thank you so much for having me here take care have a great day thank you so much